Hey guys, it's Craig at Area 419, walking you through the basic equipment needs of a beginning reloader. We pulled some things from our bench. We're gonna walk you through them. Uh, these are things that we think you need to have. You don't need to have the brands that we have. You don't need to have the type that we have, but these are the basic equipment needs to get going. Let's check it out. Understand that these are just some items that we pulled off of our reloading bench. For every item here, there's an alternative that performs essentially the same task. So from a powder dispenser standpoint, this is an RCBS Mashmaster. You can go all the way down to lead dippers, all the way up to a Prometheus. There's always a, a spectrum on how much you can spend on these products from the really basic inexpensive value side, all the way up to the super premium. So understand that. There's also always a next item that somebody thinks should be here. Whatever that item is, drop it in the comments below. Maybe it's a vibratory tumbler, maybe it's a case trimmer system, maybe there's something else that you really find indispensable that I don't have here. Again, put it in the comments, let's have a discussion about it. So I'm gonna start walking through some of these products in kind of the order that I use them on the bench. From the first side, let's talk organizational. A nice loading block is a good way to start your reloading bench. This is one that we make, it's made out of aluminum. There are lots of other loading blocks out there, other people making them out of metallic products, really nice wood ones, there are plastic ones you can find, but a nice loading block is gonna keep your cases organized and upright as you work with them. From there, we're gonna kinda go to the function, more functional parts of this with a powder dispenser. Uh, this is an RCBS Matchmaster, we like it. We also have auto tricklers on the bench. We've used beam scales, we've used lead dippers, lots of them out there, but you do need a way to reliably measure and we prefer something that is weight-based over volume-based, and there may be an argument about that, but we like a good powder measure with a scale interface. Um, lots of them out there, you need one. Uh, you also need some way to get that powder into your cases. This is our master funnel kit. This is something that we make here in-house and sell all over the world. There are lots of options for this. Ours is just one of them. We consider it the finest, but there are many, many more out there. Uh, once you've got some of this basic infrastructure, we can get into the actual brass preparation. Um, an essential part of the reloading process is lube. Uh, we use Hornady One Shot. I've used it for years. There are some other lubricants that we use around here for different purposes. Different people prefer different things from the homemade heat and lanolin products to Imperial Case Wax. Lots of options. This is just one of them, but you will need some sort of case lubrication if you're doing uh, most cartridges. There are some exceptions in the pistol world, but if you're doing rifle, doing bottleneck cartridges, you're gonna need some lubricant. A small inexpensive tool that I have here, and there are lots of options around this that can be meaningfully more expensive, is a good chamfer and deburr tool. I think that keeping a nice clean outside and inside of the mouth of your case neck is really important to consistent ammo and to consistent feeding. This is an inexpensive product. There are lots of them out there that are little hand tools like this all the way up to a Gerard or a Henderson triway head automatic motorized trimmer. Lots of options out there. Have something to clean up your necks. You're obviously going to need dies. This is a two die full length die set from Widden Gunworks. This is one of the brands that we have on the bench for dies. There are lots of, lots of really solid die makers out there, but I suggest you find a kit that has a full length sizing die I think neck sizing is something that most reloaders should stay away from. Because like Eric Cortina would tell you, neck sizing's for dummies. And I also suggest you spend the extra money and find a micrometer adjust seating die. Wooden makes some, Redding makes some, Hornady makes some, lots of them out there. Short Action Customs has a really nice one. So I want you to find a full length sizing die and a micrometer adjustable seating die. You're also gonna need a shell holder. Many die kits come with one. But if they don't, make sure you find one. Uh, shell holders are made to the size of the case head that they're to be used with. This is a number one, probably from Redding, that is made for 308 base cartridges. So this could be your BR, your 6BR, or your 65 Creedmoor, or your 308, or your 30 out 6, or your 270. Uh, lots of crossover on shell holders, but make sure you have one that will fit the size cartridge that you are reloading. You're also gonna need some way to prime your cases. Now, there is some overlap between priming and presses because some presses have an on-press priming system. Typically, I'll tell you, they're not great systems. There are some ergonomic challenges. I've used this RCBS Universal Hand Primer for thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds. I like being able to feel the primer. There are also some really nice systems from like Primal Rights, their CPS, that's a, a super premium product that I like a lot. 
Uh, but this is what I will typically pick up when I'm reloading cases. I may be sitting in my office or sitting on my couch at home, uh, priming cases. Got a lot of miles on this one, lots of options, but this is one that we had on the bench. And then you'll obviously need a press. There are a lot of different ways to, to create the pressure that you need to reform your brass in a sizing die and then use that seating die to capture that bullet. This is our zero reloading press. It's been wildly popular for us. There are obviously less expensive options. There are things that you can get into like a Dillon that has a lot going on. I'm sure there will be a debate about what the right press is in the comments below, but you'll need a press of some variety. The last piece of equipment that I'm gonna talk about after you've sized your case and you've, you've charged it with powder and you've seated the bullet, you're gonna need a good set of calipers. This is a Michitoyo 0-6, to uh, really high quality caliper. It's the same type of stuff we use out on the shop floor. Uh, always be able to check your work, verify what you're doing. Uh, I can't stress enough the idea of quality checking what you're doing on the bench. Find a nice caliper. There are some inexpensive options. We think at about a hundred bucks, this is a really solid one to move on. Uh, and they're what we trust for all the work we do. So guys, this is a good representation of the types of equipment that you're gonna need as a beginning reloader. Again, you don't need specifically the items that we have on the bench, but you need items that will perform the basic functions that we're laying out here. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, links to everything we have on the bench will be in the description below. If you're on a different platform watching this video, go to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, scroll down on this video to the description, you'll find those links. So guys, thanks for stopping by. Until next time.